So let's kick off with depression. We've discussed a number of instances or on a number of episodes in the past that probiotics have a growing body of evidence showing they can improve mood, including depression. There are a few theories in terms of what causes depression. You may have heard of the inflammatory hypothesis. And within the inflammatory hypothesis of depression, which may also hold for anxiety and cognitive impairment, brain fog, poor memory, you have inflammation in the brain. This could be from microglial cells, astrocytes, and it could also be that inflammation changes the way you metabolize proteins that are needed to then make things like serotonin and dopamine. And this sort of transitions into another hypothesis of depression, which is the serotonin hypothesis. Now, we have also covered on the show in the past a pretty similar paper from, I believe it was mid-2023, that did not find depressed people had different levels of serotonin than their healthy counterparts. And so this is a pretty seminal paper, again, in the sense that it questioned the serotonin hypothesis. However, as we've also discussed in the past, this does not mean that things that modulate serotonin, so one example would be St. John's Ward as a natural agent or SSRIs as a pharmaceutical agent, it doesn't mean that those natural agents or drugs don't help with depression. It's just that the people who respond to them may have normal baseline levels of serotonin. So without going too far afield into that argument, just to tie in that context, and then probably the third, in my view, most relevant potential underlying cause driving depression would be imbalances in your limbic system. The limbic system is comprised of the thalamus, hypothalamus, hippocampus, and the amygdala. And we need and, and want to have proper limbic system function because it does two things amongst others. One, it identifies threats. And of course, there are threats in the world, so we want to be cognizant of those threats. But if there is a overactivation of this center in the brain, it can lead to depression, anxiety, fear, worry, and may also impair things like memory and perhaps even sleep. And we've also discussed in, in previous episodes of the podcast how we do see increased activation of the center in the brain upon functional MRI scans in those with things like depression and poor memory, but not limited to those. There is sort of the context that we can now examine the probiotic interventional literature and how it may help with depression. So the first study is a review summarizing 14 randomized control trials in adults with depression. They were given either control, and this will mitigate the placebo, or a probiotic. Now, remembering that this paper summarized 14 different randomized control trials, when you look at the formulas, the probiotic formulas, used in the various studies, you see some include lactobacillus, some include blends of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, some use soil-based probiotics. So the formulas vary, and the dosages used vary from 3 billion CFU per day all the way up to 900 billion CFU per day, which is a large or high dose. The most common dosages used were between 3 billion and 20 billion, and they did find that probiotics consistently had an antidepressive effect, which is great news, and it adds on to this growing body of research showing us that via the gut, we can have a positive influence on the brain. Now, this next study I found equally exciting because they demonstrated not only improvements in depression, but simultaneously a lowering of inflammation. And across the various clinical trials summarized, there was just under 800 patients, again, given placebo or a probiotic. And we also see here a variance from bacillus species, specifically bacillus subtilis, which would be a soil-based species, lactobacillus or bifidobacterium, oftentimes in a multi-species blend. What they found was that probiotics improved depression and an inflammatory cytokine known as interleukin-6. What I take away from these two studies is that there is a growing body of evidence showing that probiotics can improve depression. And separate to that, the improvements in depression from probiotics does not seem to be contingent upon one specific formula or one specific dose, but rather we can have these 
broad guidelines for here are some general rules for using probiotics. And you don't have to worry that if you don't have the perfect formula or the perfect dose, you've done something wrong, so to speak. And again, this should hopefully make the use of probiotics much easier. And I'll close with a protocol. Given we see these improvements in brain inflammation or just you know, inflammation systemically, which probably is also occurring in the brain, and we're seeing improvements in depression, it would also seem logical that we would see improvements in cognitive function. And so this enters a randomized control trial, looking at 80 individuals with mild cognitive decline. And they were given either placebo or a probiotic prebiotic combination. In this case, bifidobacterium animalis at 10 billion CFU per day, along with two grams of inulin, a prebiotic. And that they found that there was improvements in cognitive function and attention in those given the probiotic prebiotic combination as compared to the placebo. So not counterintuitive given everything that we've covered thus far. And to follow up on this, we just covered a single randomized control trial, but what if we wanted to get a purview of what many different studies are finding if we give people probiotics and monitor their cognitive function? So this enters a 2023 meta-analysis of 10 randomized control trials. Again, either people were given placebo or a probiotic. Given it's 10 different trials, we're seeing different formulas. Mainly lactobacillus and bifidobacterium were used across these 10 different trials. And the dosages range from two up to 40 billion CFU per day. And the findings are nicely exemplified by this quote. Probiotic supplementation had a highly significant effect on cognitive function in people with cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease. They found that the most effective usage was a dose above 1 billion, which is totally reasonable and a duration of longer than three months. And it's this point I think we should cue in on. This is dissonant with what we see in many other realms, let's say IBS, digestive symptoms. Usually the impacts are seen within a month or so, but perhaps due to the fact that, and I'm speculating here, but based upon what we've covered thus far, if the probiotics modulate what's happening in the gut, this takes time, and as that happens, there can be a reduction in inflammation and that has a trickle over effect to the brain, it would make sense that you'll see impacts locally in the gut first and then spillover benefits in the brain may take longer to manifest. And while we're here on the topic of brain health, this study for parents I think is very relevant. They found that probiotics improved brain development in preterm infants. So 223 preterm infants were given either no treatment or a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium at a dose of 6 billion CFU per day. So just flagging for you, this is a similar dosage that we've seen in many of the adult studies. So it's not a, a small dose. And that's interesting given the fact that this is in a population of preterm infants. They found after giving probiotics for only five weeks and then following up two years later, there was a 70% reduction in the risk of neurodevelopmental issues. So I find this extremely compelling. And some of why this happened is, is commented in this paper, just give you a few of the high points in terms of what these researchers were thinking sort of in their discussion section of the paper could account for these improvements. Well, firstly, again, that they postulate that there does seem to be dysbiosis in preterm infants. So a disruption in the bacterial colony. Eubiosis would be balanced bacteria, overgrowth would be too much bacteria, and dysbiosis would be imbalances in the ratio of the community of bacteria. And this can lead to lower brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which literally helps with growth of the brain, as his name implies. And also in this syndrome, if you will, there can be increased leaky gut and leakage of lipopolysaccharide, which triggers inflammation. And therefore, again, as they're discussing in, in their paper, the probiotics may help increase 
brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which we've discussed before. This helps spur proper brain development. And additionally, if you reduce the leaky gut and the leakage of the LPS particles through the gut, you reduce neurological inflammation, which also helps with proper brain development. So something to keep in mind if you have a kiddo, I have become a increasingly strong advocate of using probiotics in kids because of data just like this. Something that is not great for your brain is alcohol. Certainly, I'm not going to make the argument that you have to totally abstain. However, in some people, they overconsume. And this next clinical trial was in 46 people who had alcohol use disorder. They were treated with either placebo and counseling, so sugar pill plus counseling, or counseling plus a probiotic. And they followed up at six months to see what the results were, what, you know, how effective may the probiotic have been in reducing alcohol overconsumption. And I'll just quote the researchers here. Six months of probiotic treatment reduced heavy drinking levels to social or abstinence levels. So again, pretty remarkable. All of the things that we're seeing probiotics do, in this case with addiction, as documented by a randomized control trial, really important to mention that because I very, very much so want to make sure we don't fall into any sort of heresy or bandwagon jumping. And this is why I try to moor us to using only the best science because it'll give us the highest assurances that we're not speculating. And I'm not bringing to you my pre-existing confirmation bias and searching for data that reaffirms that. But this is rather, we're just keeping an eye on what's being published and picking out the highest quality studies and sharing those with you.